Hello and welcome to episode number 18 of the VCD Roundtable. Topic of the day is going to be the VCF overview. So as we all know, service providers have to move step by step towards VMware Cloud Foundation as part of the changes in the VMware Cloud Provider Program. But before we go into the details around VCF and everything else, uh, let's start with a round of introduction. Toby is in the train and currently moving, so let's start with Toby. <laughs> yeah, hello. My name is Tobias Boschek. Um, I'm a partner at ComDivision and mainly focus on, on the whole uh, networking part. Next to Matthias. Yeah, Matthias, as a partner at ComDivision, focusing on uh, cloud architecture. <laughs> Sorry, but it was if, if saying Toby's moving, I need to stop. Awesome. Sasha. <laughs> yeah, Sasha Schwung, CIO and uh, Cloud Architect at Communication, <laughs> also working on um, yeah, Cloud Provider projects and yeah, what's next? Good. Finally, myself, Yves Sanford, um, CEO and founder of the Com Division Group, also part-time part cloud architect whenever time allows, um, and um, also host of this podcast um, together with the others. So uh, with that being said, um, let's directly dig into it and uh, start with um, the main lines of VCF. If if I were to actually want to start deploying VCF tomorrow, Toby, what's my first step? What do I need to do first um, from an overview perspective? So what are the components I need to have? And what is the, the high level flow to, to get up and running? The beautiful thing is if you start with VCF more or less from a from a greenfield perspective, you don't you need more or less nothing upfront prepared. Uh, to be honest, yes, you need to prepare your networking. You need to uh, bring in your hosts into the into your data center. But everything else is done uh, automatically. There is something in VCF, which is called uh, the Cloud Builder. And the Cloud Builder uh, would like to have the uh, input. So what is my management IP range? What is the range of my uh, ESXi hosts and so on and so on? So every necessary information needs to be bring up uh, via Excel spreadsheet uh, to your Cloud Builder. And then the Cloud Builder will start to uh, ramp up your whole environment. So deploying your vCenter, deploying uh, the vSUN configuration on your ESXi, deploying your NSX manager, uh, form the cluster, prepare the host for NSX and, and so on and so on. So we really can start from more or less zero uh, and ramp up a whole vSphere, uh, NSX, and vSUN environment in a couple of hours. But being really honest, Toby, so I, I get the base story, but so I can click really fast and type really fast. I can bring up <laughs> the infrastructure in a few hours as well. So that's not the really cool part. So is there anything else which might yeah. be more interesting around this year. <laughs> no, no. Matthias, that's, that's, it that's will all. change certificates automatically. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I'll buy it. <laughs> uh, the, the big idea behind this is not, not really the ramping up, to be honest. So the big idea behind is that we can relay or rely on an, um, let's call it really default deployment which is uh, architectured by vmware of a couple of years project know-hows by the architects of vmware but also from 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 their partners so that we really can get a standardized vSphere nsx vsun deployment which makes us at one hand much easier for getting support in the future and also that we know okay how an environment looks like because all of them are more or less nearly the same but already uh, or still with a full uh, flexibility of bringing in your own IP spaces, bringing in your own FQDNs, bringing in your own host configuration, whatever you would like to have to. But so so at one point in time, I already foreseen somewhere this summer, we are going to do a challenge. We just actually set up a bunch of hosts 
Toby gets the chance to actually do this uh, with VCF, and Matthias gets the chance to actually do this manually, including password changes, certificates, and everything else. And then we see who is faster. And, and also, this is the important part, because VCF is not only uh, ramping up an environment. VCF is also there ramping up additional environments. So we're talking now about a management domain and talking about workload domain. So the management domain is more or less there just for my management environment. So my vCenter, NSX manager, area operation stuff, um, cloud director uh, stuff, and so on and so on. So all of my, my traditional management components. And of the other side, I have my so-called workload domain, which is then really there for uh, my uh, uh, workload where I can, where I can deploy it or my um, provider VDCs from a cloud director perspective, uh, and the cloud director can consume the workload domain as a resource domain for my virtual data centers. Okay, and uh, so that means this workload domains, and I have one vCenter in each workload domain, is this right? You can have uh, one vCenter per workload domain, or you need to have at least one vCenter per workload domain, but you can have multiple clusters inside the workload domain. So you can still go, for example, with a shared approach so that you say, hey, I would like to have multiple customers on more or less the same clusters, or I can go with a dedicated approach. And now, and that's really the interesting part here, from a dedicated perspective, I can now switch uh, my behavior. I can really say, hey, I deploy a dedicated workload domain for a single customer. I or I say, hey, I go with a dedicated uh, cluster inside an existing workload domain for a new customer, or as mentioned before, I go with a shared approach as well. Okay, and when I go with a dedicated approach, so more or less a private cloud for the customers, that means I can manage this complete workload domain for the customer from the life cycle perspective. So I can do the updates, I can make sure that um, the certificates will be rotated every year or every half year, depending on um, what's necessary from the requirements. And I'm also can say, hey, I will rotate the complete um, yeah, passwords every three, three months or whatever that I can do as a service provider, but have a dedicated environment for the customers. And that also means I can deploy this workload domain with a dedicated presenter and a dedicated NSX manager. You're referring to the to, to the to the latest and greatest approach of VCF version five, where I can now decide for my workload domains go uh, if I would like to go with a fully isolated workload domain, which means dedicated vCenter, dedicated NSX manager and at least a dedicated SSO, a single sign-on domain, which is fully isolated from my management environment, fully isolated from my management uh, SSO. Or also there, I can still say, hey, I would like to have my workload domain in not isolated. Uh, I would like to have it as a part of my, um, of my management uh, single sign-on, where I can then have just a single user and log in to all of my different vCenters, or if I really have a customer requirement from a service provider perspective, where I say, hey, the, uh, the customer would like also to relay on the CPOM uh, and would like have to access to his NSX manager, would like to have access to his vCenter, then I can uh, still go with the isolated appro approach and prepare or pre uh, not, not really prepare, uh, but I would say uh, do still some additional services like certificate management, like password rot rotation for my customer. Mm -hmm. um, so we spoke a lot about um, the basics of, of more or less vSphere and, and NSX now, but I think uh, one, of the, one of the other components, Toby, of um, utilizing VCF is also that um, I can use it to deploy the components of the ARIA suite and other things in my management domain and keep that updated as well. Yes, there is also already some some part of the ARIA operation stuff. Uh, or the, not, not really some part, there is the whole ARIA operations manager, there's the whole um, ARIA operations for log. There is still the um, uh, Workspace ONE Identity Management, a single sign-on solution 
is nowadays part of the VCF. And Matthias, keep your feet still. There is also the possibility to utilize virtualize automation or ARIA automation uh, inside VCF, uh, which is there for an automated deployment. But we are it's talking a about the goods. <laughs> we are talking about the good solution. So we are talking about the cloud director. <laughs> And we are hoping that also the possibility of deploying Cloud Director directly out of the whole VCF stack will be there in the future. Quick, um, quickly to those uh, joining us uh, via the different live platforms, <clears throat> feel free to drop in any questions in the comments in the meantime so that we can answer them as we um, go along. So, um, with with the area suite and all of these uh, different components in it i think one of the one of the clear advantages as you already pointed out several times is not only the day zero operation so that we get can get the system up and running and the base platform up and running it also allows us to do um system management from a day two operation for updates and patches and stuff like that um my understanding is one of the huge advantages is that we now also with VCF that it will take care of the interoperability metrics. So um, that I, as the, let's say, user or service provider do not have to spend at least minutes, if not hours, trying to figure out all the different components, if they are all allowed to work together, that this is actually being maintained by VMware. Yes, absolutely. I'm not really a big fan to utilize the word of single patch management, but it is there in VCF. So I get the possibility to just download my new interoperability matrix and with, with my patch management, I also then give get the chance to uh, update my uh, uh, STDC manager, update my vCenters, update my ESXi hosts, update my uh, NSX environment. Um, still in the normal way, so also there, there is no no black magic in the in the uh, background saying, hey, okay, I can do another update on NSX, or I can um, I can do some hidden patches on 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 uh, vSphere. No, it is still the lifecycle manager will utilized uh, from from a vSphere perspective. The NSX update procedure will be utilized from an NSX perspective. But um, as you mentioned, the big advantage is if there will be a new patch release or a new major release from VCF, we can be 100% sure all of the interoperability is tested and then the patch gets released. Um, looking at similar solutions, when we talk about other vendors in the past, whenever they combine these things, one of the challenges which we always have seen is that there is a delay in how long it takes up until patches or things like that are being released. Um, do we have any experience so far on how fast VMware, at least for security patches, how fast they are going to make them available as part of the VCF um, plane then? Secu security patches, is, especially when it comes to a high CV rating, is absolutely the same like for vCenter, so same day. When it really comes to improvement patches or major releases, okay, there is, there will be a, there at the moment, so we're still talking about what we have seen in the in the in the last couple of years, there is a delay. So, for example, VCF uh, talking about vSphere eight, uh, the VCF is capable of uh, being utilized with vSphere eight and NSX four. Uh, I think at least two months from now, from in the uh, from now in the in the past. Uh, so yes, it had there was a slightly a delay of having vSphere eight and having NSX four in VCF, but also there. It needs to be verified, it needs to be tested. Um, so then we can really say, hey, okay, now my VCF version 5 is there with the support of vSphere 8, with the support of NSX. Now I can really be 100% safe that all of the stuff is working. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you want to have a stable platform from that perspective. You want to be sure that the, all of this is working together. But the question is always, uh, the question was more because that was raised lately from, from some service providers. It's like, how fast will we finally get security patches if, if really there is an security. incident? I mean, <clears throat> as much as you can always blame every individual vendor, there are times where, where one vendor is better than the other. VMware just collected another beautiful one in ARIA automation. Um, so, uh, if you haven't seen that one, there is it's, uh, there is a role issue, role management and security issue there at the moment going on. It's it's on the support homepage from VMware. So, um, <laughs> uh, 
um, all uh, again, everything has its times um, from that perspective. Good. Um, anything else, Matthias? You kept being silent and in the yeah, dark. Yeah, Do you, don't you don't you have light in Austria anymore? Oh, I have light, but I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I the switch is gone. <laughs> <laughs> The switch is gone. <laughs> Should I that send you a sleep on train for your travel? Sorry. That is life, right? Oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So now uh, VCF, so what we already mentioned with all the security patches and stuff. So in the past, I, just being honest, uh, that was one of my biggest concerns. Because not being able to implement a, a security update with a really high CV rating just immediately was uh, uh, one of my biggest issues, which was not possible in the past, but now it's possible. That, that's really good news. Um, so for me, uh, VCF uh, as a whole solution brings up a big advantage um, in terms of enabling CSPs to provide multi-tenancy and multi-tenant platforms in different ways. Because as a CSP, we, we might end up having customers being okay with, oh, I run on the share platform, all good. So networks are separated, that's all cool. So, but there are other customers which might have the need to have their own dedicated infrastructure, their own platform for performance needs, SLA needs, whatever concerns they have. And with a VCF, as a CSP, we now have the option to either provide it with VCD on top um, as a dedicated cloud or just provide plain vSphere access with a dedicated vCenter, a dedicated workload um, domain, and have multi-tenancy on a different level and provide infrastructures. So there might be some customers not having the need to use VCD on top to manage their workloads. Furthermore, who would not want to who would not want to manage their workload with VCD? Um, people who are not aware of VCD. So we still need to spread the word and make a better job just to tell everyone VCD is the product. Yeah, I but guess still, we need some, to invite some other people to the show then from time to time so that we get more viewers. So once we are talking about a half a million viewers on our roundtables, that's actually where we can, can consider your task completed. Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Um, yeah. But even with, with all of that and the centralized management, because if you have uh, many, many customer platforms which are dedicated, uh, the, the management of those platforms is challenging because you need to keep track about the patch level, the build numbers, uh, cluster consistency, which which is a very important topic because I don't know uh, how many infrastructures all of us have seen a single cluster and inconsistent build numbers inside one cluster. Um, yeah. Oh, Sasha, yeah, and, and also, story. <laughs> and, and, and also to add something on that uh, quickly, not only inconsistent cluster configuration, also inconsistent hardware configuration, so which, is, which is also a big part of the whole VCF story, to, to have uh, consistent hardware configuration as well. So, sorry, now, now Sasha, back to you. <laughs> Hello, not a problem. So an, another point is what we discussed with a few of the service providers, depending on the new license model and so on, uh, that's uh, core based on the physical servers. And um, that also mean we will not start again with all of the servers we have planned for this cluster. We maybe start with four, five, six servers, and then it's very easy with VCF to scale up the clusters if, they, if the need is there to add more hosts and that I can also do, do over the STDZ manager to say, hey, I need one more host. Maybe I have a pool of, ho of hosts all, yeah, still in the rack and I'm ready for, um, yeah, to add to one of my clusters. 
and that will be completely uh, yeah a new way that you as a service provider need to go also because of the licenses you become more flexible i think that's an interesting point here especially if you're working with dr sites oh, that is interesting but in that case you just always need to keep in mind if you want to use like a, a pool of physical hosts to expand existing infrastructures, you just need to make sure that you have a hardware consistent platform across multiple clusters. Or um, I, I'm not saying like the AWS approach, but that's what they basically do, right? They have a few standardized host systems, and then you can ramp up an infrastructure, a workload domain based on a type of hosts. And then you can expand your clusters with the same type of hosts. And that's, I think, the approach, Sasha, you have meant, because it, it makes perfect sense in that case. But um, so, the, but now we're, we're on, on, on the far other end, like huge infrastructures and stuff. Um, maybe we're, we would like to take two steps back. Uh, so Toby, another question. So what if, I start brand new. I have a really small infrastructure, just six hosts, right? If I'm have if I'm having only six hosts with VCF, I can't deploy four hosts for the management domain and another four hosts for a workload domain. So that's not possible. Um, why? Just on, because of math. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> is on, there a on, solution for on, that? On bond. On, on one hand, why do we do you already know that you need four hosts <laughs> for your management domain? <laughs> oh, 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 I read the documentation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I'm surprised. Unbelievable. No, uh, just kidding. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, also for that, uh, it, there is a solution. This is also something I mentioned already um, in another uh, set of podcasts uh there is no need that we already that we start with a dedicated management domain there is also an approach in vcf available with a collapsed management which is the official name to say hey i have my workload and my management running on top of the same cluster but also on the other hand this is not uh, uh being a pitfall for the future so if i then uh, come into the phase of scaling and say hey now I really have grown. My business, service provider business has really uh, the, uh, going well. I would like to now have the dedicated management domain. Yeah, just migrate your workload off from the from the management domain, and then you have your dedicated management domain, uh, and still you can deploy your workload domains, whatever you would like to have. Also, from a starting perspective, with a collapsed management and workload domain in the beginning. <clears throat> But, but later on, so you just need to come up with a, a migration scenario if you need to split it. You have to need to split it. So since we're using uh, Cloud Director, yeah, just ramp up in a new PVDC and migrate your workload from one OVDC to another VDC. Yes. And that's, that's it. We have learned today migration and it's not a bad word. Elastic PVDC. I, know, I have heard something about it. <laughs> Elastic PVDC for migration? Okay. <laughs> 5,000 things in my mind which can go wrong with that one. Um, but um, one step back, I mean, um, so you can actually have your collapsed um, cluster and everything else. You mentioned before consistency from a hardware perspective. Um, so what, how consistent or how identical does the hardware need to be so that I can add a host to a cluster? Is there, uh, what's the typical scenarios? I, I would say at least from a typical scenario perspective, uh, if we have uh, vSAN as a as storage layer, Oh, uh, he said, if we have VZ, you, we, we discussed, you we were gone, to Toby. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, from, from, from a hardware perspective, I would say at least uh, when, when we have VZM in, in, in as an underlying storage, same disk group configuration. 
um, same amount of memory. CPU as always. Uh, I'm a big fan of having the same same CPU, uh, at least the same family. Uh, we we know what's going on there from from different set of cores and so on. So I'm to be honest, I'm a big fan of having having the same hardware configuration. If I'm not away, if I if it is not possible to get the same hardware again, um, VCF is allows me also to ramp up a new uh, cluster in a workload domain, or to, to be honest, in a full new. Uh, if I have, if I'm not utilizing vSAN as, as primary storage, it's just two hosts. So if my hardware is really already is so much outdated, yeah, just ramp up a new workload domain starting with two hosts, and have fun, more or less. Have fun, more or less, with two hosts. Um, okay. <laughs> So, um, so how would I then, just out of curiosity, how would I then upgrade a management domain later on? From, from, from a hardware perspective? Yes. Bring in the new hosts, then you, you know, okay, now I have a different mix of hardware. Also add the host to your management domain. And then there is in VCF also a workflow available to decommission a host or to remove a host from a cluster and then so you ramp up your management domain partially to for example eight hosts migrate all of your workload uh, and then remove the old hosts decommission the old host and throw them out of the window <laughs> and that's, yeah. awesome. that's ecologically we are going to actually bring <laughs> no, them to a proper recycle <laughs> place they will be dismantled and all Absolutely. the source materials will actually be brought um, to where Recycle. they need to go. We are not throwing them out of the window anymore. <laughs> yeah, why not? We can throw them firstly out of the window and then bring it to the recycle station. <laughs> yeah, but the microplastics. <laughs> okay. The emission of the okay. microplastics. Guy. Okay. <laughs> Good. Matthias has a more serious question. No. What, so we have a new question. What about VCF management domain based on OSA and migrate to ESA? That's a question in the chat. I'm putting it on the screen even. How did you do that? Uh, yes. Mag uh, mag ma magically. Uh, to be honest, I don't have the answer right now. Um, this is something we need to we, we need to validate because uh, ESA has been interviewed used with the latest release, so with 5.1. 5 now we have also there the support for ASA. Um, uh, I've, my personal opinion on that is, uh, and still there is something which is still not 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 allowed in, in, in VCF. You still can do your daily business in your vCenter. So if I have an uh, starting, started with an OSA infrastructure, and would like now to just do it in your vCenter as you have would do it in a non-VCF environment, let's call it that way. Uh, but uh, to be honest, this is just in, in, in uh, my personal opinion at the moment. I would We need to have a look, uh, and maybe answer this question in the next podcast if we have figured out already something. But uh, still, as the, the most important part is, Yes, there is the uh, uh, STDC manager. Yes, there are workflows available in the, in the STDC manager. There is the API available in the STDC manager. But uh, is, if, if something is not available in the STDC manager, but it is available in NSX, it is available in um, vCenter, still use it in the old fashioned way. Let's call it the old fashioned way. And be, but be careful if you have your VCF management domain running in a stretched environment. So ESA is not supported currently. ESA, ESA is supported. Yeah, ESA is not supported. Yeah. So the migration <laughs> will not work. The migration will not work, yeah. But I think the, the, the hope is sooner or later, um, VMware by Broadcom will come up with a new workflow just enabling us to migrate a management domain from OSA to ESA. I think that would be uh, the smoothest way. Okay, good. So to answer the question, 
There is no info on that right now. We're just guessing and hoping. <laughs> yeah, and we are going to take it and try to find an answer. Maybe not necessarily for the next session because that's going to be NSX projects. But uh, I mean, we can answer it in the Q and A section. But um, maybe then for for the other sections. But again, for all of those who are actually listening live or actually seeing us or actually want to join one of the next sessions, you can see you can throw questions at us, and sometimes you might get an answer, sometimes <laughs> not. <laughs> Good. Anything else which we think we should cover from a VCF perspective? At least from an overview perspective. I know that we already discussed that we are going to next episode is going to be NSX projects. Um, but um, moving along in the long run, we wanted to um, then do a bit more uh, deeper dives on individual pieces around VCF. Potentially, we are going to combine that with a live demo. So for those of you who are that actually listening to the podcast, it might be a bit boring to listen to a, a install. But you always have the links in the podcast, uh, which also give you directly access to the videos. Or you can join us for any of the live sessions. Um, once we announce them, um, you have the chance to join us there as well. That being said, I think um, that covers it. Sasha and I are already um, where our next podcast is going to be recorded from our kickoff location in Puerto. Um, so that's going to be for next week, our location of choice. Um, after we will have a wonderful boat trip where it's going to be stormy next week. So that's going to be interesting. So if yeah, some of us have lost won't, color. Won't attend the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or he won't attend the ship tour. So whatever. Um, yeah. So we will, uh, next week is going to be around N6 projects. We hope you enjoyed today's session. Before I speak my closing words, I'm going to hand over to Matthias for his closing words first. Yeah, so yes, Tony uh, wasn't moving. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm looking forward into the, the whole VCF topic. And even though I'm uh, looking forward to the first hands-on demos, uh, because I think it's the it's the new way and, and the, the future on how to manage the base infrastructure, because that's it. Uh, in the meanwhile, I think we consider having vSphere uh, Software defined networking with NSX and software defined storage with vSAN. We consider those, those uh, three uh, pieces being the base infrastructure of a data center. And that's the new way to manage kind of the data center operating system. Um, I take the chance, Toby's moving and pass over. Toby. <laughs> Yeah, also thanks for joining. Uh, and nothing to add from, from the words from Matthias. It will be the new way. We need to go the new way. I'm really, I'm really happy to, to be part of it. So uh, let's run VCF in the future. And hand over to Sasha. Yes, thanks for joining. Um, we'll see you next week. And um, yeah, we'll provide you, we will provide you a lot of more information about VCF going step by step through the different VCF design steps and uh, the different options with uh, VCF in the next weeks and months. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining in, whether you were live with us on the podcast or later on in the video. Um, we hope you enjoy the show. You can always uh, throw comments at the uh, live streams and other things also later on so that we can cover them in any of the sessions. Um, or you come into one of our live sessions and uh, join us there. And with that being said, um, thank you for listening. Next week, we are going to record episode number 19, NSX Projects, and uh, we'll cover that and do that live from the Com Division kickoff uh, 2024 um, on Fuerteventura. And then we are also going to explain you what the next sessions are going to be. With that being said, thank you in for listening in and see you all again soon. Bye-bye.